These are the junk mail cards that I made yesterday. The um, postcards that I just painted and decorated and I plan to someday make something out of them. I don't know what. Um, I did a little bit more work on some of them this morning and then I had technical difficulties so um, yeah that didn't quite pan out. So this is kind of plan B and I'm going to kind of talk about the creative process I guess that I use. Um, people ask all the time where I come up with my ideas and I don't usually. I normally borrow them from someone else. Um, I'll either see something that someone made, I like it, I'll try to make one like it, or I'll just be inspired by something that they did and um, just use certain elements or techniques that they used in a project. But very rarely do I have an original idea. I do, however, have lots and lots of unfinished projects. Um, it may seem like I finish a lot of projects, but I really don't. It just looks that way because I don't really show a lot of my unfinished stuff, but believe me, there's way more unfinished projects around here than there are finished ones. And this is just paper and book stuff, just a few of them, not even all of them. Um, this doesn't include things like a huge bag of crocheted doodads that I need to make something out of at some point. Um, but I'm often inspired by my unfinished projects. Sometimes I'm inspired to finish them. Sometimes I'm inspired to throw them out. Um, and sometimes I pick them apart and, you know, make something else out of them. I have several unfinished journals. I have this board book that um, these are really good for altering and you know making a cool book out of and see it's it's gessoed pretty much and kind of ready to have something done with it but I never could really think of what so there it is I have another book soon to be book maybe that's just some signatures and some scrap paper there's graph paper there's I think there's some phone book pages in here and I'm not really quite sure what that's going to be, but um, as soon as I decide, it's ready. It's waiting. Unfinished journals. Yeah, I got a bunch of those. These are a few of them. This one, I love this journal. This, I mean, the book itself is gorgeous. And I have some pages in it that are from some, um, this was a book workshop that I took. And there's some pictures and some journaling that I did for that. And then just some pages for no reason. Some of them I still like. Some of them not so much. That page is ready for something fabulous, but I don't know what. So this got off to a good start, and then it quickly fizzled out. And I took apart another journal that I wasn't liking and I pulled a few pages out of it that I thought I might put in this one or in something else. But yeah, I haven't even done that yet. So that one will have to speak to me eventually before I can go back and do anything else in it. I've got this one. This is a cool journal. I didn't have it closed right. It closes like that. And it's one of those, because of the closure, it can't get too fat. I have to keep it kind of kind of flat in there. But it's got all kinds of stuff. There's some um, scriptures, and I sometimes doodle and write stuff down during church. And then just some art stuff. So, I mean, it, I don't know what happened to that one. But, you know, again, it got off to a good start and then it kind of started to fizzle out. And that's as far as I've gotten. So, a bunch of good blank pages to do something with in there. This one was going to be a an altered book with kind of a Da Vinci theme and I didn't get very far at all with it and I actually decided I don't really like altering books. Um, I glued some pages together, I did a cutout, and went, not for me. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that. 
I may end up just taking out what I already did and use those in something else. I don't know. I've got, oh, this is the grandmother of all unfinished projects around my house. This, um, it has potential. It still has potential if I ever finish it. It was an embroidery thing. You can, let's see, can you see that? I think you can. Which is really kind of nice. Um, the colors actually work in my house now. They haven't worked in my house for years and years. And look, the unfinished part is just like this one little flower here and this, like just these two tiny little parts. But I can't make myself sit down and finish it. I'm just, I'm not not loving it anymore. So there it sits unfinished. And it has been unfinished. I actually bought it, look, on the tag, January of 1985. So this has been in my house unfinished since 1985. That right there should make you feel better about pretty much any unfinished project that you've got laying around your own house. And sometimes looking through unfinished projects can give you inspiration for new ones or for finishing some of those old ones. And that's what happened when I looked at this board book. Um, I started thinking that there might be a way for it to work with some of those junk mail postcards that I made the other day. I still haven't figured out exactly how this is going to end up. I don't know yet, but this is kind of my, my thought process here. I cut the spine on it so that I could open the book all the way because when you do, so you can open it like this all the way around and then it, it's almost sculptural you know I could glue these two pages together and then I've got this this thing here and then I thought okay maybe I could take these are some of the um, envelopes that I showed you how to do yesterday and I rubber stamped on some of them and I did a cute little demo this morning and I filmed it and everything and then I had technical difficulties and um, yeah it didn't happen so, but I think pretty much everyone can figure out how to stamp. That's all I did. So I thought these might be cool to use as the signatures in here. Just kind of, you know, randomly stick them in here. And they might make kind of cool signatures. Or at least parts of ones. See, see what I'm saying? Are you seeing it? I am. It's looking good. So, um, but for this book, to, if I want it to stand like this, it's going to have to be really fat. It's going to have to have lots of stuff in here. Um, I don't know exactly what all that stuff's going to be. Some of it's going to be junk mail for sure. Um, but I think I'm probably going to have to start collecting some more stuff too. And let me show you how I collect stuff. And I'm, this is just one little bin. I'm not going to show you all of the... I'll have to do a different video for that because I've got a lot of stuff. This is my uh, junk mail bin. I use it for junk mail and magazines, things like that that I want to keep and use in some future undecided project. And I have a rule. I have this one basket. This is the only basket. If I outgrow this basket, I don't get to put the stuff in a bigger basket. I have to take stuff out of this one so that it always fits in this basket. And that's the only way that I can keep myself disciplined enough to not turn into one of those creepy hoarders like you see on TV. But I figure if I'm just very, you know, neat and tidy and organized about it, then even though I keep tons of stuff, that doesn't make me a hoarder, right? Right. Okay. I have, um, in here I have some, you know, those envelopes full of coupons that you get. I sometimes just shove a few in there. I have, there's a magnet. There's a, oh, this is, this is a good brochure because it's really heavy stock. Um, that'll make a good something for something someday. You just watch. 
I have, these are those, you know, reply envelopes when you pay bills. And some sometimes I pay them online, but you still get the little thing in the mail, so I keep them. And I've cut these down. I had them in mind for a different project and then changed my mind, but I'll use them eventually. I love these perfume things that come out of magazines. They, um, they make good pages in a book, and if you open up the strip, if you just like glue it here and glue it here, then you've got this instant little pocket, little flap to tuck stuff in. So those are great. I've got a few of those. Plus they make your book smell nice, and that's important. I've got a bunch of these, um, and I, I didn't paint them. I put uh, ink on them last night. But they're those um, things, I call them magazine droppings because, you know, they fall out of every magazine that you open up, those little um, subscription card things. And I keep those, or at least a fairly good stack of them. That's an ad out of a magazine. American Science and Surplus, I love, I buy stuff there. Their catalog is great, it's hilarious. Their stuff is cheap and wonderful. I can't say enough good things about American Science and Surplus. And I don't know, I th I'm thinking about collecting several of their catalogs and binding them together for, I don't even know what reason, but I feel like I wanna do that. Anthropology sends me their book and I keep it. I usually, I haven't done it yet, but I will go through here and just rip out the pages that I want and pitch the rest of it. And that's kind of the key to holding on to magazines. Oh, don't keep the whole thing. My gosh, they'll take over your life. Go through, rip out pages that you like. If it has an image or a pattern or texture or whatever, just save the page, pitch the rest of the magazine. And that's an easy thing to do, you know, while you're watching TV with the family or whatever, because it doesn't require much brain power. Uh, these are some pages I've ripped out recently. Well, this one of them. Where's the rest? There they are. See, things get out of order. That just irritates me. These are some pages. See, some I've used for different things. And I actually have a different file that these go in that I'll, I'll um, they have categories and yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. I might show that someday, but I might not. But anyway, for the time being, they're in here. I, I don't subscribe to a lot of magazines. In fact, I subscribe to one. I get Texans Monthly. I have for I don't even know how many years. Um, that's the only one that I get. Everything else kind of wanders into my house. It's something I got for free, something someone gave me. Um, I don't spend money on magazines. This is a good freebie. Lowe's. You can sign up for this online and they'll send it free. I think it's about every quarter. It actually has good, you know, DIY ideas in here, but it also has some good pictures. So I usually, I'll end up going through and just ripping out a few pages out of here after I read it first. And I think this one came with it. And the only reason I'm keeping this, the images, I mean, they're nice and all, but are not really anything I'd want to use in a project but it's good paper. This is heavier than your normal cheap magazine. So I'm going to keep that whole thing just because of the paper. This was another little magazine. It didn't have anything inside that I wanted, but I like the big glossy paper. So I just kept the cover. Um, got that out of the newspaper, I think. And again, kept it for the paper. There's another magazine page. Another magazine, the inside didn't appeal to me, but nice heavy covers. These I got when we were moving, and um, I've kept the whole things because of the paper. These are way nicer than just your typical magazine. Good heavy pages. The covers are a good weight, so I kept the whole thing just because I can use the whole thing. And, okay, that's misfiled. So this is my bin that I keep all that kind of stuff in, and like I said, I don't allow myself to outgrow the bin, and that helps me to keep stuff under control. Otherwise, I would have this kind of thing piled up in corners all over my house, and it would be bad. So I will end up going through there and picking out a few things to use to put in my um, board book that, I'm, that I showed you. And I also will go through my scraps of 
um, other papers. These are, okay, you're not going to be able to see this. This will be a weird, okay, can you see that? I think you can see that. This is just a, I think it's an ice bucket or something, that I keep um, random paper scraps in. This is, you know, scrapbook paper that I've used in different projects, and I've got those few little end pieces that need to go somewhere. I'll stick it in here. Some vintage stuff that I got, some pages out of books. These are usually leftovers from other projects that, you know, they don't really go back into the cardstock file because they're little parts and pieces. And plus, I like them like this because I like to be able to flip through them just like this. Because I can just flip through and kind of see what jumps out. See, this just jumped out at me for no reason, so that means I need to pull that out. Something usually will jump out and grab me, and then I'll end up using it. Or if I'm looking for a little, you know, doodad, a little embellishment, I'll flip through here and just see if I have something that'll go with whatever project that I'm working on. Mm, I'll tell you what those are. Those are cool. So that's what this little file is. And I do the same thing with this that I do with the magazine and junk mail bin. I don't outgrow it. Um, if it gets so overstuffed, that it becomes unusable, then I, I can't get a bigger bin. I have to go through and weed out and, you know, either get rid of it, use it, repurpose it, you know, whatever it takes. But that's, that's my little cheesy self-discipline thing. So I went through, I picked out some stuff from my bins to use in this book, maybe. See, look, it's like, it's like trick photography or special effect. Ha! Okay, I oh know, that's bad. Here's what I came up with. These are, um, oh, I have more of those envelopes than I thought. Here's some more of the envelopes that I made the other day that I can put in here. And just with these in mind, I went through my scrap paper bin and started just pulling stuff out. I didn't particularly look for things that match in color. Um, some do, some don't, but they all go together because I firmly believe that all colors go together. I just kind of looked for stuff that felt right. It, um, I liked it. It got my attention. And... I had these in the back of my mind while I was thinking about it, so it kind of, I don't know, it kind of subconsciously helps you to choose things. But if you'll look, I just pulled out scrapbook paper, um, advertisements, wrapping paper, printed paper, all kinds of different doodads that I may or may not end up using in the book. <laughs> okay. Me and my daughter just had a silent conversation. Um, this here's some tissue paper. But these are just things that kind of got my attention, jumped out at me. This, I had the white ones in that bin. This is actually that um, paintable wallpaper. You can get it at Lowe's, and it has they have different patterns and textures on them, and it's wallpaper that you can paint over. You can paint it any color that you want. That's the whole idea behind the stuff. And I bought several rolls when we moved into this house, and I use this as my shelf liner instead of shelf paper. And I do that because um, a friend gave me that idea. I don't think I ever would have thought of it on my own, but she said she uses wallpaper because it's cheaper. Uh, wallpaper can be expensive, but if you get this paintable kind or just an inexpensive wallpaper that you like, you get way more on that roll than you do on those little cheesy rolls of shelf liner. So um, you get a lot more for your money. Plus, it's wallpaper. So you dip it in water and, you know, it activates the glue. You stick it on your shelf. You let it dry. It's on there, and then, you know, when you, if you want to change it or if it gets dirty, you need to replace it, it peels right off. Um, I thought that was just a brilliant idea. It was not my idea. It was hers. But I have a bunch left over. I have lots of these um, scrap pieces that I cut 
off of the roll and I've used them the other day I went I was in my art room cleaning out my drawers full of ink pads I had like five drawers of different ink pads left over from when I used to do a lot of rubber stamping and I don't do so much anymore and a lot of them had dried out and you know really gone to the dark side and they just needed to go so I had to go through and you know you have to test each one to see if it still works you know like testing magic markers to see if they still work you gotta do that so instead of just using some piece of scrap paper that I would throw away I tested them on these and I just sort of you know, mush the ink pad around just to see if it worked. Used my favorite art tool in the whole planet, a paper towel, to kind of blend it in. And then ended up with these just cool, colorful, for no reason, pieces of paper. And I will use these in some way at some time. This, I don't know if it will be strong enough, but I would try. I think this would make a good binding on a book like that, what do you call it, tape binding or whatever it is, where you, you put the strips of paper or fabric across this way and then you sew your signatures, you sew over it. I think this would be really, really cute for that. So I might use that. Or you can use them inside the books on your art journal pages, whatever you want. So that's what those are. Um, I have my paper towels. Those were from another project. These were from the ones I did yesterday. I may use those because I like the colors. Uh, this is more, I think I tested my re-inkers on this. This was a piece of tissue paper. Actually, I think it was transfer paper left over from the 70s. I'm not real sure. But um, I tested some ink pads and, and re-inkers on that and then just saved it because it's pretty. So these are some of the things that I may use in this um, mysterious book project that may or may not happen someday. But it's, you know, it's kind of coming together because I've got the signatures, I've got some signatures anyway, they're, they're on my mind, they're working, they're the right size. I'm liking this whole, you know, maybe do a, a stand-up sculptural book instead of one that, you know, you open and close. I've got lots of papers that I like to go with it, so it's kind of feeling like this might work out. And just as it would happen, I didn't plan it, but, you know, serendipity shows up all the time in the, in the creative process. But a few days ago, I was, I don't even remember why I was there, how I got there, but I was on the YouTube channel for a girl. Her name is Jenny Belly, J-E-N-N-I-B-E-L-L-I-E. -E -L -L -E. So if you put that in the YouTube search, all her videos will come up, and I'm telling you, they are fantastic. She is so talented. She, um... I watched a couple of her tutorials, and she has this awesome British accent that I could just listen to her all day because of her accent. Um, one of the things she showed was homemade washi tape. You can make your own washi tape. And that's one of the craft supplies that's so popular right now that I haven't bought. I just, you know, I don't buy a lot of craft supplies anymore. I just, I tend to like to make my own or find my own. Um, so she showed how to make your own washi tape. And basically all you do is you put strips of masking tape. I think I might have done it a little differently than her. I used some freezer paper, glossy side up, stick the masking tape on there, paint it. I used watercolors. And then I cut along the sides of the masking tape so the freezer paper is still stuck to it. So you've got your release paper when you're ready to use it. Uh-huh. Genius. Uh-huh. Yeah. I agree. Jenny Belly. Not Shannon. Jenny Belly. She's the genius. And this, this is, I used a couple different kinds of masking tape. Some was just regular tape. And uh, this was a roll I had of this, I think it's called something like quick release masking tape. 
it's um, supposed to be sort of like painter's tape where it doesn't mar the surface, but it's white, it's not blue. And it's really great if you need a tape that doesn't stick to anything, because I'm telling you it's awful, it doesn't. But it's perfect for this. I can take it, glue it to a book cover, piece of paper, or whatever, it'll be great. And then I just put them on, um, I, I compulsively keep these water bottle caps and I just poked a hole in them, wrapped the paper around it, and then stuck it on a knitting needle that lost its mate. So that's my washi tape storage system. Yeah, that's all me. That's right. <laughs> also on Jeannie Belly's website, or on her um, YouTube channel, she made these awesome nugget beads. Nougat beads, she calls them nougats. And she takes little pieces of foil um, she paints some foil, but just puts some regular craft paint on foil. She cuts it in strips, she wads it up, and then she puts glue on it, poke hole in it, put glue on it, and it makes these little paper beads, or foil beads. And they're so cute. And so I did that. I painted some foil, I cut it in strips, I wadded it up, and then I thought that her process was much too easy, and I needed to make it a little bit harder, because that's what I do. So instead of putting glue on it, I got out my old hot pot and my um, thick um, embossing powders, um, embossing enamels, and melted some in the hot pot and then just took my foil beads and dipped them in there. So they've got a little bit sturdier, almost plastic cover on them. But these are, aren't these fun? These are really so fun. I don't think I would use them for jewelry. I mean, you certainly could if you like that kind of you know, chunky jewelry like that. But I think they're great for books or, you know, little embellishments on tags or whatever. And these are some of the other ones. Okay, I tried a few different things. These were candy, some kind of little foil candy wrappers. They came out okay, but they were a little small. I like these. They were also a different kind of candy wrapper, but I had trouble getting consistent size, as you can see. These, to me, they look like petrified spitballs. I don't know what I was thinking. It was some kind of paper. Okay, that didn't work. I'm not going to use those. But I will use those. And look, see, while I was talking about serendipity, it, they go with all of this stuff that I picked out. And the washi tapes do, too. Everything kind of works together, even though I was not consciously thinking about it, planning it. I didn't pick colors. I just grabbed whatever I wanted. And sometimes your subconscious just, you know, helps you out when you're temporarily ignorant, which I often am. So I think this is going to be really cool. Um, as I keep working on it, and it might get finished. I might give up on it and add it to the stack of unfinished stuff. Um, you know, that remains to be seen, but uh, I hope maybe tomorrow to be able to show you a little bit more progress on this. So until then, um, the end.